Hi guys, before we go into implementing a simple gun system, um, I want to show how to implement a, another popular um, control system for chop down shooters, which is where you use the mouse to aim the player and then WSD to move around, um, or arrow keys of course. So going into the player controller, let's um, take away this code and create a void control. WSD, and we'll paste the code back in there, um, and we'll create another void control mouse, or whatever you choose to name the two control systems, and we can just paste that code in there, and um, in this way we can now call either one of them from the update method, um, control mouse or control WSD. Obviously, we can't have both. I'll comment out control WSD for now. And uh, yeah, so we can just keep experimenting with which one sort of suits the style of the game better and uh, maybe even give the player an option to choose which one they prefer um, in an options menu or something. So the only thing that really needs to change for control mouse is the way we set the rotation. We want it to be towards the cursor. So we just need to get the mouse position, and we do that by having a vector 3. We can call mouse pos is equal to input dot mouse position, which um, returns a vector 3 in screen space, which is basically uh, bottom left hand corner of the screen is x equals 0, y equals 0, and top right hand corner is equal to x equals screen dot width and y equals screen dot height. So we need to convert that into world space, which is um, the values we're used to working with. So to do that, we need a camera. So we'll have a private camera, which we can call cam. And we can get a reference to it by saying cam is equal to camera.main, which is whichever camera has the main camera tag attached to it. And now we can say mouse pause equals cam dot screen to world point. So we'll do our conversion for us. And we'll get a new vector three um mouse pose dot x mouse pose dot y and for the z value we need to know the distance um at least on the y axis between the the uh, the camera and the player. So we'll say cam dot transform dot position dot y minus transform dot position dot y and now we can set the target rotation much like we did in the move WSD target rotation is equal to quaternion dot look rotation mouse pause instead of input this time and now Let's just copy from our last one um, the line of code that makes our player rotate to face the target rotation over time. And this isn't going to work 100% how we want it to because it works fine here, but as we move off the center, we discover things start not working so well. And this is because um, quaternion dot look rotation, which takes in a direction, it looks from the center of the scene, so that's vector 3.0, and it looks in a direction. So we want it to actually be looking from the player's position. So to do that, we can just um, go into where we set the target rotation to mouse position, and we can just subtract uh, the player's position. But we don't want to subtract their y position. So we say minus new vector 3, transform dot position dot x, comma 0, comma transform the position dot z and this way it will be getting the direction from the player's position and now everything should work fine for this control setup I'm missing something um, looks like just a missing bracket that should work now and yeah this control setup is now working as it's meant to 
Um, so like I said, we can just switch between them here by just adding two slashes and taking it away. And I'm going to actually stick with control mouse for now. Uh, and we can get on to creating a basic gun system. So in our project, let's create a new C sharp script called gun. Can open it up. And let's create a public void shoot. Now keep in mind, at some point we might want to implement bots and stuff that also have guns, and we'd rather that they use the same gun class that our player uses, rather than having to create a sort of copy of it for them. So that's why we're going to try keep, well not going to try, we will keep all references to input out of this class. That will happen in the player controller, and uh, send commands to the gun class, much like the AI class later will. So uh, we need to know, first of all, when we shoot, where is the bullet coming from? So we'll have a public transform. And we can call this maybe spawn, projectile spawn, whatever you want. And we're going to be using ray casting. So we'll have ray, ray equals new ray. And the origin point of this ray should be the spawn position. And the direction should be spawn dot forwards. And we also want to know some information about what we hit. So we use that using raycast hit. And now to actually implement the raycast, we say if. And this if statement will be true if uh, if the ray hits something. We say if physics dot raycast, and we give it our ray. We say out hit. Basically, what out does is it it gives it this um this hit variable and it allows it to modify it and then give it back to us. So that way, the the physics dot raycast method can actually send back a whole bunch of information in this raycast hit class. Uh, and now the last thing that we're going to pass in here is a distance. So later on we might have some variable for like the effective range of the gun and whatnot. For now we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to say float shot distance equals 20. And we're going to say shot distance. And now just to test things, um, we'll say shot distance is equal to hit dot distance. So that's the distance between the origin of the ray and the object that it hit. And now we can say debug dot draw ray, and we want to draw it from, of course, ray dot origin in ray dot direction, and we want to multiply the direction by the shot distance so we can see how far it went. And for color, just to spice things up, we can say color dot red, and we can give it a one second duration. Now to actually make the gun fire, we need some sort of input. So we first need a reference to this gun, public gun gun. And we can say if input dot get button down shoot, which we'll have to set up, then gun dot shoot. Oh, where did that come from? Gun dot shoot. And we can just assign the gun to our player here. Oops, it needs the gun attached to it, of course, the gun script. And we can remove this box collider, not necessary. Um, and we also want to create that spawn position. So create an empty and make it a child of the weapon. And just move it to like the tip of the barrel, essentially sort of over there, and we can just call it spawn, and remember to drag it into your spawn slot there, and in project settings input we need to create a shoot button, and I'm going to make my input for shoot be either spacebar or left mouse, which you say mouse zero. Um, 
And now, let's see if that works. We're going to enable gizmos here in the game view because uh, when you do debug.drawray, that's a gizmo essentially. Um, hold on, we need to actually assign our gun here. And now we can see we're shooting and the, the rays actually collide with the cubes. So that's pretty much exactly how we want it to work. Um, one last thing. How long have we been recording? 11 minutes. One last thing that I want this gun to be able to do, one last fundamental thing is to be able to um, have either a semi-automatic burst fire or automatic capabilities. So in the gun, now we could have like a bool um, saying is semi, is burst, is automatic, but that's kind of clumsy, and rather we're going to use what's called a enum, so we can say public enum gun type, and notice I've capitalized, capitalized the G as in like a class name or a method name, um, as opposed to lowercase, like a variable, and public enum gun type, we're going to uh, declare our gun types now, we'll have a semi, a burst, or an auto, just like that. And now we can say public gun type. So see we actually referring to this enum here and we call it gun type just with a small g. And now if we go into our weapon you can see we have this gun type here and we can choose from those options we created semi, burst or auto. And um, I'm going to create a public void here called shoot continuous. This will be for automatic fire. And basically it will just check if the gun is automatic, then just redirect to the to the shoot method. So if gun type is equal to gun type, now don't get confused what's capital and what's not. We're checking if the variable is equal to the enum dot auto and if it is then we're going to shoot and from the player controller we'll say okay so if you press the button down then just shoot once else if if you actually hold the button down input dot get button shoot then gun dot shoot continuous and obviously now it's checking if you're holding down the shoot button is it automatic and if it is then shoot and of course later on we'll have to implement um, rate of fire and stuff so you don't just shoot a million bullets a second but for now they'll be fine we can check um, if we shoot once it fires if we hold it down it just fires once remember this is um, not an automatic gun. If we change it now though to an automatic gun and play, if we hold down the shoot, it fires like an automatic gun. Okay, that's everything for part two. Um, bit of a shorter episode, but I am short in time as well. So uh, yeah, we've now got two different control schemes that we can t that we can choose between, and. Uh, a sort of solid foundation to our gun class. So I hope you've enjoyed and learned something, and I'll be back with part three, most likely sometime tomorrow. Cheers.